I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Lincoln Lancaster County Planning Commission of November 2nd, 2022. A printed agenda is available outside the hearing room and a copy of the full agenda, including the staff reports, is available online or at the planning department room 213. The Open Meetings Act is posted just inside the doors at the back of the room. If you parked in the parking lot across the street to the north, the gate is open and no parking coupons are needed. Out of courtesy for those attending this meeting, commissioners and the staff, cell phones may not be used in the chamber during any portion of this meeting. We appreciate your cooperation. The, final, the Planning Commission action today is final on the following item, uh, 1.5, Special Permit 22034. Any aggrieved person may appeal final action of the Planning Commission to the City Council or the County Board by filing a notice of appeal with the clerk within 14 days following the action of the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission action on all other items is a recommendation to the City Council or County Board. The first item of business is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held October 19, 2022. So moved, Campbell. Second, Joy. Shelley? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Corr? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Minutes approved 9 to 0. The next item of business is the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda will be called at the same time and will not be scheduled for a separate public hearing unless there is a request from someone wishing to speak or at the request of a commission member. I will ask Shelley to read all the consent agenda items into the record. Once those items are read, she will ask if there is anyone wishing to speak. If you wish to speak on an item on the consent agenda, we would ask that you stand and state that item. That item will then be removed from the consent agenda and scheduled as a separate public hearing under section three of today's agenda. All items remaining on the consent agenda will be voted upon in total with a motion for approval. Shelley, will you please call the items on the consent agenda? Yes, I want to please note that the agenda item 1.1, Comprehensive Plan Conformance 22022, is actually being removed from the consent agenda and scheduled for public hearing. So the first item on the consent agenda is item 1.2, Comprehensive Plan Conformance 22021, to review as to conformance with the 2050 Lincoln Lancaster Comprehensive Plan, a proposed amendment to the South Folsom Redevelopment Plan to modify the subphases of the phase one projects in the Foxtail Meadows redevelopment plan are property generally located at the east side of South Folsom Street and south of West Pioneers Boulevard. Next item is 1.3, text amendment 22008, amending the Lincoln Municipal Code section 27.63.075C and 27.63080B to allow the height requirement to be adjusted by the Planning Commission for non-residential healthcare facilities and academies, private schools, community colleges, colleges or other post-secondary education facilities. Next item 1.4, change of zone 22032, local landmark overlay for the K Street power plant on property generally located at 440 South 8th Street. Next item is item 1.5, special permit 22034 to allow for the sale of alcohol for consumption off the premises on property located more generally described as 3243 Cornhusker Highway. This, the Planning Commission action is final unless appealed to the Lincoln City Council. Again, this is final action. Are there any expert communications to, to be disclosed on these items? No. Are there any expert communications that took place or additional information you learned while visiting these sites to be disclosed? No. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on these consent agenda items? Is there anyone here wishing to speak on any of the items on the consent agenda? If so, please state that item. Seeing none, um, I will entertain a motion. I would move that we approve the consent agenda, Campbell. Second, Joy. Shelley? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Consent agenda approved, nine to zero. Thank you. There are no requests for deferral, so we will now proceed to public hearing. Prior to staff making a brief presentation, each staff person should state their name, agency, and address. The applicant will then be requested to present his or her testimony, followed by those who wish to testify in support, 
followed by those who wish to testify in opposition. The staff will then be given an opportunity to respond to the testimony, and then the applicant shall have an opportunity <coughs> for a rebuttal. Each person testifying should state their name and address and shall have five minutes to speak unless additional time is requested and granted. The timer will go off after four minutes. The clerk will then indicate you have one minute remaining to wrap up your testimony. Once the final minute has lapsed, the clerk will indicate that your time is up. If during your testimony you have copies of documents or materials you would like distributed to the Planning Commission members and or included as part of the record, please provide them to the clerk. The Planning Commission will vote immediately at the close of the public hearing unless the Commission votes to defer action or continue the public hearing. Shelley, please call the first public hearing item. First item for public hearing is item 1.1, which was removed from the consent agenda, comprehensive plan conformance 22022, to review as to conformance with the 2050 Lincoln Lancaster County Comprehensive Plan, a proposed amendment to the Lincoln Center Redevelopment Plan to add the Lincoln Bold Redevelopment Project on property generally located at 205 South 9th Street. Are there any ex parte communications to be disclosed on this application? No. Are there any ex parte communications to take place or additional inf information you learn about <coughs> visiting any of this site to be disclosed? No. Hello, Planning Commissioners. Hallie Salem, City of Lincoln Urban Development Department, 555 South 10th Street. Um, we see a lot of our projects on the consent agenda. Um, I think you're right. This project is a big project, is worthy of uh, public discussion and so um, taking it off today I think gives us just that one more opportunity to really talk about the importance of this project and and um, the impact it will have on downtown so um, this project is a um, 22 story 230,000 square foot building at the corner of 9th and P at the current service station um, on that site. Um, it will be the new entrance to Haymarket and have a profound impact on the area. And so I think that it's worthy the, of, of discussion, worthy of discussion at Historic Preservation Commission and Urban Design Committee. It's been to both committees twice for discussion. And then yesterday evening at Urban Design Committee, it was um, approved uh, un unanimously for um, to go forward um, with the project. So um, I appreciate all the staff time and Stacy Hageman's um, staff reports on this and really working with the architect and developer to come up with a project. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things um, so you can kind of get context for this project. Again, this is um, the corner, when it comes up, of uh, 9th and P Street. I'll pause for video. Maybe. It's coming. Do I need to press the power button? No. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ruin anything. It's visual. Right. <laughs> I'll try it. It's green now. Green is it's a green better light. than red. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. There, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> so, so yes, uh, it's at the corner of 9th and P Street. Um, again, historic Haymarket. This is not in the historic district, so I think that's an important point to make here, and um, and that it the the zoning allows for. Uh, construction of a high density building up to 275 feet. This is actually less um, than the, the maximum allowed height because of flight patterns for FAA um, coming down from the Capitol, which is almost 400 feet tall with the sower and um, coming down toward the airport. I think they're limited to um, under 260 feet, it's 250 something. So that will uh, kind of keep it a little bit smaller than that 275. Um, the project is, uh, uh, has multiple uses within it. And I'll show you some images of the building, the, the renderings that we have 
at this point. So this is the latest rendering. This is from the historic, or excuse me, Urban Design Committee agenda from yesterday. Um, and this is modified. This was actually what was presented. Um, this is a little bit different from what was presented to historic preservation and I think reflected some of the changes that historic preservation wanted to see. Um, and so this was the historic preservation commission uh, presentation and you'll see that the podium um, that was presented um, was modified to reflect the desire for um, more consistency with the buildings in the historic district. Um, uh, smaller window openings and, and more in line with what you would see in the historic district. So I think there were a couple of things pointed out. Uh, uh, Melissa Gangler pointed out, I think that the P Street side is very different from the 9th Street side and and that it needed to reflect that and, and I believe it does. And then I think Greg Newport also uh, pointed out during that Historic Preservation Commission meeting that this is, you know, it's a challenge, um, but an opportunity to uh, have a design that um, it follows that kind of historic character of the district. So um, this podium change, I think, really reflects, uh, reflects some of the changes that they wanted to see. Uh, and then I'll point out the uses of the building. There is a first floor um, pull-in off of 9th Street um, that um, will be eliminating some of the curb cuts on P Street and on the alley, but two curb cuts will, will remain on the 9th Street side so you can pull in, pull around and out. Um, it's mainly for valet parking, this pull-in, and um, and there will not be any parking on site, um, but that park off site, so the valet will need to be taking cars to the off site garage. Um, and we'll be working with them on that from parking services standpoint. Um, the floors two through five will be commercial office. Um, the sixth floor is an amenity floor. Um, and then the upper floors are all residential with a mix of, I believe, 70 units proposed approximately for rental and approximately 30, 33 units proposed for condo on the upper floors. So, um, and that mix will um, probably change as people are looking to purchase those condos. So it's um, uh, expected to be valued at 100 million at the end of this generating quite a, a substantial portion of tiff which we feel can be used toward a lot of things in the district including potentially dec connection um, other e energy efficiency things that consistent with the comprehensive plan as well as the downtown corridor streetscape and i'll just also highlight the context of this what we'll be seeing in the next, um, in the near future, which is, um, this is the student housing complex at the corner, opposite corner of 9th and P, um, uh, 13 stories. And then this is the graduate, existing graduate building, um, all of which were are on adjacent corners to this project. So um, it is a little bit of a different context in terms of 9th Street, again, meeting the zoning code and uh, height restrictions um, and will have a, a dramatic impact on the skyline. And uh, Danae Kalkowski representing the developer is here to answer any questions as well. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. The uh, initial drawing that you, or uh, rendering that you showed, could you put that back up please? So this is the one that was presented uh, to Urban Design Committee yesterday. So I'm fairly certain. I, can you clarify that this is would be looking at the building facing north and west? Sure. So this is this is from as you know from the southeast uh, corner of that inter intersection of Ninth and P. Got it. Looking northwest. Go back to what they originally proposed. 
Say that again, please. Go, can you go back to what they originally proposed? And, and this is not the original proposal. This is uh, this is maybe the fourth iteration that I saw. So um, mm -hmm. this does have a, a, a quite a significant difference on that lower P Street right. side. Yeah. Right. And then back to the mm -hmm. the one they presented yesterday. You talked a little bit about um, some of the Historic Preservation <laughs> Committee's comments and, and changes that might have been made as a result of that conversation. Um, can you give us a feel for the general conversation last night? Yeah, I think it was very positive. I think there were some comments about um, that I didn't mention, Mark Candy brought up about the streetscape. And um, so we will go back to Urban Design Committee on the streetscape portions of it um, um, as we're planning out the downtown corridors project and how it relates to this building. Right. So we will do that. I think generally they, they recognize that this will have a significant impact and they talked about that. Um, they did, uh, you know, I think that they were provided with the staff report and um, minutes from historic preservation and could see that change Great. between the two. Um, I don't want to, if there was anything I left out, I know Andrew's here, um, may be able to carry some of that additional information. Haley, I'm assuming, and you might not know this for sure, but that is drawn to scales so like those other buildings, that is like the correct proportion when we're looking at them. You know, um, they did bring, actually bring that up last night in wanting to see um, the the image that they showed last night of the graduate compared to this. I think you, the graduate looked quite a bit smaller. Um, I think this is pretty close in terms of the size of the building. If you look at, um, you know, the what I call the old Chicago's building, I know it's been many things, but um, it's, it is sort of that three to four story building and um, kind of in line with what they're showing there. Um, so the heights look uh, about correct. Okay, thank you. Can you uh, can you go back to um, the original uh, plat plan? Sure. Now that I got them out of order, I think I can. There we go. So this is the project area. Yeah. And that area in red is the actual site. Where's the area in red? So right here. Okay. So it would go, um, it's just on the filling station site? So, right. So that what they are, what they have done is acquired um, air rights over the old Chicago building, but the footprint of the building would stay within that red um, service stations. I was going to say, I was, I, they had to have more space somewhere. I think the air rights um, are to accomplish windows and glazing on that west side. So then what you'll see from, and, and that was another comment by Peter Hind, he wanted to make sure that the glazing was um, similar to what is on the east side of the building and um, that that is what they are showing us at this time. Uh, so, heavy glazing on that west side so he was concerned I think when you come out of Lincoln Station that you see um, not the back side of a building but a, a building that's complete all the way around and and I think the designs that will be included in the redevelopment agreement will reflect that any other questions will this um, I don't this won't come through planning commission again right because you just no, have no this the is development agreement to right the redevelopment agreement will solely go back to council. to city council so i totally understand why you would want to look at this today anything else thank you very much so i assume that was the staff testimony yeah. okay testimony from the applicant Good afternoon, Danae Kalkowski appearing today on behalf of Lincoln Bold, LLC. 
And Hallie's done a really good job of explaining the project and stealing all the thunder, but um, I think probably one of the key elements to this is um, we understand that the project is not within the historic Haymarket District, but all of the design has been done to reflect the fact that it will be an entryway, a very important entryway into that district. And so, um, as Hallie mentioned, the design went to, we did pre-meetings or, or unofficial meetings with Urban Design Committee and Historic Preservation Commission in order to get their comments. Um, every time we went back or went to the other, we kept, there kept being a new iteration of the building in order to try to address the comments that we had received. And I think um, probably the best things we heard at both of those um, meetings within the last month were their um, appreciation for the willingness to listen, to engage with them, and then to address the comments that we received in the design that was brought before them. And so, as Hallie mentioned, you know, what went to urban or to historic preservation this last time was still, we were still reiterating uh, up until what went in front of urban uh, design committee yesterday uh, in order to continue to address those comments. So. Um, we did get the approval from Urban uh, Design yesterday, and I think the two things I heard, same as Hallie mentioned, is number one, we'll be back with the streetscape. And the streetscape will be important because that'll be both what the city does and what the redeveloper does. That'll be important for probably utilizing TIF funding on some of that streetscape work. So that'll be an important element in the redevelopment agreement. And then, um, as Hallie mentioned, the other comment really was the desire that we, the redevelopers stay true to the materials as they're represented on the, you know, the building that came in front of um, the Urban Design Committee. So, um, but with that, they didn't have a lot of other comments and were appreciative of the changes that had been made. Um, we won't be coming back before you because this is totally in accordance with the zoning. You know, we're in the B4 zoning and so, um, the height is allowed, the use is allowed. Um, we'll be doing the parking off-site and city parking, which obviously also is allowed. Um, so we're really just coming through for purposes of it being a redevelopment project. Um, I think the developers are excited about it. They really want to provide this vibrant, attractive, inviting gateway you know, into the historic hay market, but yet have something still new and bold and innovative you know for lincoln and so it will change the entryway coming into lincoln also besides the entryway into the historic hay market but as hallie said that entryway is already you know progressively changing with the housing project on the other side of the street we already have the tall building with the graduates so um something new and exciting for lincoln um but and i would be happy to answer any questions you might have i think everything i had in my notes to mentioned you either ask and Hallie already gave the information but I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have um, is that south side if I remember reading right in the in the commentary from the staff it's limestone yeah I believe it was going to be a limestone product yes right. and secondly I can't think of any other gas stations in in downtown Lake mm -hmm. um, you'd probably have to go to 27th and oh, yeah. well, there's yeah, a across the street. Right, oh, right you stop. The street. Yeah, right. okay. All right. It's the, one of the few in Lincoln that's full service, so us wheelchair users use it a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not that that matters, but <laughs> yeah. Just to call out to there, gas stations, get a full service yeah. pump. <laughs> we'll admit there's a little historic connection for many people to that gas station on the corner. Yeah. Um, yeah I think we're, we're, suggesting this might be a higher and better use yeah. for that corner for the yeah. city of Lincoln and its downtown. It's been there for about 50 years. Been there a long time. Yeah. Long time. Lorenzo? So it looks like a great project one, um, but I noticed in the, uh, the text demand on infrastructure, like utility, transportation, mm -hmm. is any consideration being done for sustainable development? So Good question, good question. Um, we've been in conversations with the District Energy Corporation to see if there's a possibility um, to do some expansion of their system to potentially serve this building. Um, that, that's still in the, in the development um, and exploration stages, but we did 
if you will notice on Hallie's map, we did draw this big redevelopment plan area in order to potentially accommodate something like that. And then under the uh, uses of some of the TIF will be some energy efficiency enhancements to try to, you know, address that because it's a big tall building with lots of windows and so that is something that will be taken into consideration. Any other questions? Thank you, Tanae. Thank you. Is there any testimony in support of this application? In support, any neutral testimony or testimony in opposition? Anything else you'd like to add? Okay. I would move that we close the public hearing. Second, Core. Shelley? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Public hearing <coughs> closed. And I would move that we approve a uh, uh, comprehensive plan conformance for 22022. Second, Joy. Discussion. Uh, I, this is a great, would be a great addition uh, to downtown. And it boggles my mind every time I drive downtown, because I'm not downtown that much, and see how many new buildings are going up or around us. And, and um, I think this would be a great entryway to the city. Yeah. I uh, also agree with what my fellow commissioner has said. And as you come over the viaduct and you'll see the 13 story building, the 16 story building, and now the 22 story building, it'll be a really dynamic entry from our downtown into the Haymarket. And I love how with all the input from the historic group and the urban design, we're mixing in the limestone and transitioning very beautifully into the Haymarket area. Uh, it's something that as we look at the arena and all the things that are, we're doing here in Lincoln, it's an excellent addition to our goals. And I applaud the, uh, the owner of the property instead of just giving notice and saying uh, to the Malacars, you're out. Uh, they have agreed to uh, relocate them oh, so it can wow. continue to be a family business. Thanks, Rich. Perfect. Full service, here we go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I do have to put it in plug for my favorite full service in my neighborhood. <laughs> oh, yeah. 40th and A, right in the corner, Ernie's. I, I know that there. one, too. <laughs> yeah. um, I agree that this is a great project. I appreciate the opportunity to learn a bit, little bit more about it, hear about uh, Urban Design's review yesterday. And uh, as, as, we've, as we've noted, it's an important project for the downtown. And um, we're excited to watch this come to fruition. Shelley? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yes? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Approved 9 to 0. At this time, anyone wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so. Otherwise, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So move, Campbell. Second, Core. Shelley? Ball? Yes. Campbell? Yes. Core? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Edens? Yes. Joy? Yes. Rodenberg? Yes. Ryman Yost? Yes. Edgerton? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. I've always